Hello, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for uh, joining us. Um, we're here today with Adriano Henny. Welcome to Towner's Photo Gallery in Bad Homburg. We had the Venice the opening of Adriano's exhibition of charming Venice photographs, which we'll look at more closely in a minute. And we're very happy that Adriano is here. Adriano has a kind of mixed background, Italian and English. And I think you told me you spent half your summers or many of your summers in Venice, which is why you know it so well. So take us back to those days. Well, hi, David. Thank you very much indeed. It's, uh, it's a great privilege to uh, have my photographs being displayed in this wonderful gallery. It's really beautiful. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, yes, uh, I was born in Italy. Uh, my mother was Italian, um, just inland from Venice, in a place called Colli e Ugani, the Eugenian Hills. Um, and uh, I think probably one of the punishments I had was having been born in Italy, I was I had to endure an entire life of education and living in the United Kingdom. But anyway, <laughs> I feel very strongly, very strong roots with with Italy. Um, not 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 so much not just because mum was Italian, but because we had family out there, and my grandmother, the maternal, the matriarch of the family. Uh, demanded that the first-born grandson uh, needed to be back home as often as possible. So every summer, uh, it was mandatory. We were there for three three months. Dad, unfortunately, had to work in the UK, uh, back in England. But uh, with mum, I was there for three months. My sister also joined us. And that was a period of real learning and becoming used to Italian culture, establishing the cultural and emotional roots that have endured uh, now uh, for many, many years. Um, and I, in many ways, it feels very much like home, or even more so to a certain, certain extent than the UK does. Um, but the connection with Venice was, I mean, we were inland from Venice, only about 70 or 80 kilometers, but the connection with Venice was really through my uncle, who was a professional artist of some repute, um, who had a Venice, uh, had a, a studio in Venice, and he was mm -hmm. the one who introduced me uh, really to the city and to the city beyond what you see as a tourist, the back streets. And in those days, uh, the tourism was there, but nowhere near the intensity that you have at the moment. Didn't you tell me that um, you picked up photography because you used to nick his camera? No, it wasn't his camera. There, were, there was another uncle who had cameras and things. And dad actually borrowed one of his cameras, a Voiglander, a Vitesse, which I still have. It's actually falling apart. But um, and I used to play with that uh, when I was very small. I think there must be a photograph somewhere of me pointing this thing at my dad trying to take a photograph when I was about eight. But that was my first introduction. But I mean, the whole introduction to art itself, not just photography, but painting in particular, mm -hmm. uh, came from, from my Uncle Delmo. Um, and uh, that kind of got suppressed because... I never really intended to be a photographer. In fact, 40 odd years of research as a medical uh, researcher, I got a PhD in medicine and I've been a medical researcher either as an academic or an in industry for over 40 years. And it's only in retirement really that that, uh, that I've reacquainted myself with, with art or through photography and that's where it started really. Okay, so um, let's, uh, let's, let, let's show our viewers something else. So Adriano is the next photographer in this series of monochrome perspectives and you can see, you see here the list of photographers that have exhibited over the past uh, over the past year um in in this series monochrome perspectives all black and white photographers and um i guess what we should do is talk a little bit more about your background but do that while we're looking um at at at, at some of your at some of your images so we've we've talked a bit about the um, um, the, the connection it, Italy and UK and and most of your education took place in the UK and you spent forty years in medical research and how does that kind of connect to photography? What, 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 what? <laughs> well, the, the only real connection, I guess, is as I, when I was doing my PhD, it was actually in cardiovascular pathology and I was working in a pathology laboratory and I my prof asked me to develop a lot of films that he he had taken of pathological specimens. So I did have some dark room experience. No dodging and burning, burning a la Michael Kenner, but just enough to develop film and print it out. So I, that, that was my only connection uh, as a as a working professional in, in, in science mm -hmm. with, with film. 
but I had a hobby wherever I went. I had a camera with me. I took snapshots. I tended in those days to shoot uh, color slides, actually, rather than film. Um, but it was never an intention, really, to 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 have a, a career or, or a serious semi-professional professional, professional uh, journey in photography. That came came a lot later. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your your love of Venice attracted you to that, and what I think is so charming is you have you have brought to life those bits of Venice that no tourist ever sees or visits um, because. First of all, you know the city incredibly well, um, and you've taken time to do these amazingly beautiful compositions of the Venice off the beaten track. It's it's Venice where the Venetians live, and, and that's what's so charming about it. We've all seen pictures of gondolas and St. Mark's Square, but well, it's the got little... Too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you've got a few of those, but it's these slightly hidden courtyards that charm me so much well that really goes back to my introduction to Venice. so a couple of things one is in the images that i've made i i i try to convey that partly because that's how i was introduced to venice with my uncle mm -hmm. and and the thing for me is a lot of these photographs have they may not be you know, there's a lot of them are not what you would normally associate with Venice or the typical the typical cliche shots that you have of Venice, but these are ones that have a particular emotional cultural collection with me going back those years. So I want to bring that out. I want to bring because for me, Venice is much much more than that which is normally put portrayed in its the grandeur of its of its art and 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 buildings. It, these, are, these are images that try to convey the Venice that has endured for over 1400 years. It's still there. It's falling to pieces in places, but it's, it's uh, a paradox. I mean, it's falling apart, but it's endured. It, it's, it, and these are the things which are the essence of the real Venice. This is where what people live in, this is what people see, those few people now that are remaining. I mean, population is dwindling every day below 50,000 for the first time and it, it's an it, I, for me I, I want to demonstrate that this is this is the Venice that we need to preserve this is what is you know the fundamental the essence of the of the city that, that we need to show sure, they're they're kind of personal but they're they're historical yes. as well yes so um after this a little lost courtyard um we have something that is more immediately recognizable as Venice because everyone recognizes gondolas, but why they it looks a bit like they're out of focus here. So well, it is. I mean, I it, so this is a long exposure, as obviously yes. any photographer will tell you. I mean, but the, and it's and it's been overexposed a little. But but for me, it, this was a kind of a mistake. It was an error. This photograph, but 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 it's 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 not perfect. But in its imperfection, it, for me, it conveys mystery it, it conveys a little bit of of uh, a, a mood of eeriness and stillness and quiet which again these are words that you wouldn't normally associate with with the, the confusion that you have in venice it's quiet it's still it's tranquil uh, there's an absence of confusion it's black and white you don't have color there to, to sort of confuse the image so it's allowing you to interpret that in whichever way you might want to but for me it's an emotion which is transmitted that that again conveys the essence of Venice to me as an as an individual. And what I love about it, just as a photographer, is the fact that those poles are crystal clear and sharp, and it, the gondolas are, are moving through this long exposure, and you flatten the water through the long exposure, and it makes the whole thing very three dimensional. You can almost you, you want to touch it. Yeah, I mean, so I mean, I've, I've got a number of, of these kind of long exposures of, of, of gondolas, which convey movement and motion, because if you see them tethered to their poles in the Bacini, uh, where they're, they're, they're sitting, you don't actually see them static, they're always moving, they're always bobbing up and down. So for me, that's an important component of generating 
um, a feeling of, of of reality of what what's going on in in that particular. And moment. it's an interesting example of how um, the camera and the human eye see exactly the same thing, but our brains don't go right. out of focus because something's moving. Exactly. Um, and we, the camera's brain and the human brain interpret the same image differently. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, I, I love this one because we, we've just seen pictures of gondolas at rest at, at, at dawn, I guess, or at dusk. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and this is a real Venetian. <laughs> um, gondolas are not built in some factory in the middle of China. They're actually built by Venetians in Venice. And, and, and this is... This is real Venice. They're real people making them. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 yes. I mean, this is, it's a, it's a, it's a lovely photograph for me again. Uh, this guy is completely. He's got a cigarette hanging out of his mouth, long hair, <laughs> and he, you know, he, he, full of character. He's completely absorbed in building this new, uh, this gondola from scratch. And this is in one of, I think, three or possibly four uh, ancient building. Um, sites uh, for, of gondolas mm -hmm. in, in Venice. This is Squero di San Trovaso in Dorso Duro. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's it, it's an incomplete, it's still in process of being built. But again, it's something which is not necessarily a cliche acquainted with uh, with Venice, but it's this is it. This is re reality as it is now. Yeah. If it wasn't for these guys, you wouldn't have gondolas. Exactly, right. exactly. I mean, no one would dream of building a new, of inventing a gondola. And they're days. expensive. And they're expensive. I can't remember exactly how many tens of thousands of euros they are, but they're not cheap. And the thing that that you, as the audience, unfortunately can't see just by looking at the screen, but you will definitely appreciate if you actually come physically to the gallery and admire these images. The, the, the here is a wall of of Adriano's images behind us, and you can see that they're 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 all beautifully mounted and framed. But what you can't see is that actually the print stands away about a, a quarter or half a centimeter from the base. So that makes the print stand out a little and it makes it even more three-dimensional yeah, than, than, than the images already Yeah, are. I'm very pleased I'm, I'm, and I'm very grateful to the to the uh, print with the mounters um, in, in near Southampton who produced this. And it gives it gives the print a, a, a presence which and a depth which which you wouldn't necessarily appreciate quite as much if it was actually mounted completely flat on the on the backing board, but it's I, I like them. So <laughs> here's another here's another something which I love because um, you try and imagine this image without the elderly man walking through that, and it would be completely different. Yeah. Um, and this is somewhat quite well known, isn't it? So yes, these the, this is the portico which uh, it runs alongside the the Palazzo Ducale, the, the, the Doge's Palace in uh, in Saint Marco, like I said, in Saint Marco, and I can't I can't remember a time when you see this so empty. I mean, yes. this is probably exactly. one of the busiest places in Venice at any moment throughout the entire year. Uh, this was taken, uh, the photograph was made in January, uh, and I think it was 2015, at about seven, eight o'clock in the morning. Um, and for me, apart from the beauty of the of the architecture and the difference in, in, in shade and texture uh, of the arches, the walls, the pavement, the end wall, which has got some beautiful marbling in, at the end of it, is this gentleman uh, walking along the dead center of the of the portico bent over with his arms behind the back clearly absorbed in his early morning walk but it's more than that for me this is an instant reminder of my uncle I go back again to them mm. of the artist because that's how he used to walk he always used to walk bent over like that hands <laughs> behind his back looking at the ground okay. he looked at the ground because he was an amateur geologist and paleontologist and he was always looking for fossils in the in the in the pavement below and he used to have a pipe in his mouth and this is exactly how I remember that, and for that reason, it's very personal. Yeah, and and what you've done is you've taken, you you you've almost removed the the Venice that that everyone knows and loves, and and you've gone. This is the root of Venice. This is this yeah. is the essential part of the city. Yeah, uh, yeah. Again, it just it. And 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 this <laughs> I, I I love and. Um, 
almost I, I I feel I need to apologize to people because we're showing them a a, a, a JPEG here. It's a it's a high quality JPEG, but if you come to the gallery and see this physically, you see on the left the the darker bits in this um in this image on the left and the right. Um, you can see so much detail here in the physical image. Um, it's and what's the name of this? So I call it Secret Garden. Secret Garden. Okay. Yes, <laughs> it's and, not it's so secret, so but I mean that's what it looks yeah. like. But I mean, and and the thing about this is, and you know, the people who came to the gallery yesterday and the day before, and we were talking about this, just said, "Well, when did you make that photograph? Was it?" But this was actually made last November, and I think it was probably around one or two o'clock in the afternoon, and I actually just. I turned to the right as I was walking past and I just saw this little courtyard with, with some, mm. some greenery. And I stood and I stood and I made the photograph. Now you think that this was absolute silence and there's no room. Behind me, I had a couple of hundred Japanese and Chinese tourists going all the way like this. And behind, <laughs> but it, but it, this looks as though it's completely silent and quiet. And I think that's the point. Yes. Is is if you if you if you don't if you, if you walk with your eyes open and look beyond the mask that is presented that distracts you because that's what you're looking at normally and you look beyond that for things that you wouldn't normally want to see then you see some elements of and that's what's so charming is it's your you're, you're showing beyond the mask and obviously in with venice we know the masks are used in in at, at carnival time but it's it's the mask that most people see they don't look beyond no, the masks exactly. and you're showing the fragility and the beauty of what lies beyond the mask here yeah and mm -hmm. and this is is another one it just looks like well there's nothing happening there's nothing going on it's calm um where are we here so you again if you look at this uh, you wouldn't necessarily think this is uh, it, this is in venice um, apart from possibly uh, the three poles in the background, which are typical. Uh, they're called, um, uh, oh God, I can't remember what they're called, but anyway, uh, they're, they're, they're guides to the, the, the channels, the navigation channels in, mm -hmm. in the lagoon. This is a fishing boat. It's in Burano. It's early morning. You've got the mist in the background. But for me, you're seeing an essential component of life in Venice. The, the fish in the lagoon that that are richness of the of the fish that are part of the Phoenician typical Venetian cuisine. This is a fishing boat, possibly going out, may have just come back from a fishing trip. But you've got again uh, an entire uh, emotion of of silence, tranquility, calmness, the rippling water, the reflections in the water, silk like uh, ripples. That to me is again conveying an emotion uh, and a feeling that you wouldn't normally uh, experience walking through Venice with the confusion and the crowds that you've got. That's what it is. That's what, if, mm -hmm. you, if you, again, look beyond the mask and you look at things in a slightly different way, this is life in Venice. In yes, and, and I love the fact that these uh, images are all black and white. Uh, there's no color images here because um, everyone knows the colors in Venice. You see the Campanile, you see the red bricks, you see the beautifully decorated um, cathedral, you see uh, 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 amazing colors. And to reduce it to its essentials, just so that you focus on on forms, on lines, on textures, um, I think is is, yeah. is wonderful. I mean, I, you know, I think, and I, I subscribe very much to, I think what Michael Kenner once said, if you, if you reduce if you if you have black and white, you're reducing the image to its fundamental essential components. Mm. But it then invites the observer to complete the picture for themselves in whichever way they may want to, rather than doing the job for them with a bunch of color. That's not to disparage color. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think this is this this is a much more intimate association with the images that you produce. Yes. Oh, this is this is actually the cover of the brochure that we have here. Um, and for those who don't speak uh, German, it says down below Venice beyond the mask until the 29th of July. So that's how long we, we have the the exhibition here. And this to me, I, I love having this image on the on the cover. Um, it's Venice beyond the mask, Adriano Henny. And it's fantastic that you're here, Adriano. Thank you so much for well, thank you. Um, talking to us today.
um, after the 29th of July, um, we'll be ending this series of exhibitions called Monochrome Perspectives, and we'll be having uh, the photographer Anthony Lamb, who will be uh, showing his photographs, and the title of the exhibition is Escapes, and that will be from the 4th of August. So um, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, joining us, everyone. And again, thank you, Adriana, for taking the time to have these beautifully printed, framed, bringing them over here. <laughs> um, please come along and see them. The images are, are they are so much better when you stand in front of them, you know, 50 centimeters away, you can see all the details that you just can't see in a JPEG. Thank you. Adriana. Thank you, David. It's been it's been wonderful to have them on on the walls here. They look great. In my, but I would say that I'm biased. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you again soon. I hope. Oh, yes. Please come to the gallery. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. bye.